Okay, so the guy there did it for me. I can hear it now. I can hear myself. That's cool. I like it. So the very let's get the the difficult questions out of the way. Uh, the issue is about uh, how do we pronounce these uh, letters, these uh, uh, the acronyms. Um, one way to pronounce them is to say LXC or LXD. Uh, however, the official documentation of, uh, of the projects says at the very beginning that we pronounce them LXC and LXD. Um, for my part, I will be using the official pronunciation. Uh, so LXC and LXD. And so one of the issues with uh, Lexi and Lex, and especially Lex D is that not many people know about this. Not, not many people have probably not, they are not using them. So um, that's a big tough problem. If you use Google Trends, you will see that not many people talked about them, although they're very, very nice and useful. So I would like to have some show of hands if people have heard about Lexi and Lex D. If you can raise your hands. All right. Great, and specifically about so Lexi goes back to 19 to 2008, so it's more popular. Uh, what about Lex D? Uh, show of hands for Lex D. Okay, very nice, very nice. Um, so, uh, what is this? What is this thing about Lexi and Lex D? Um, we more or less we, we, we know we all know about virtual machines, and uh, a virtual machine is just the, the reason we have virtual machines is that we can uh, um, we can virtualize uh, bare metal computers instead of having let's say two three four different uh, uh, actual computers you can use virtualization and you can have all these three four computers into one box. That's the main benefit of uh, virtualization, and this has been, for the last, let's say, 15, 20 years, very, very uh, important. One problem with virtualization, with hardware virtualization, is that uh, it takes resources. Uh, it does a very good job with virtualizing the different, uh, let's say, operating systems, but it just, it just takes uh, too many uh, resources uh, from the computer, uh, because the way hardware virtualization works with things like uh, KVM, uh, VMware, VirtualBox. Uh, what happens there is that when you boot the system, it, it boots up the Linux kernel, and then it uh, starts with the actual uh, operating system. So it takes quite a lot of resources, and you cannot run on the same hardware uh, too many virtual machines. There is a bit of a limit that has to do with processing power and RAM and so on. So uh, what you get with Lexi and LexD is that you have something called OS-level virtualization. This is different from hardware-based virtualization. With OS-level OS um, virtualization, what you have is that uh, those containers, uh, they are reusing the running Linux kernel. So that's a very important part. The, the running Linux kernel of the host is being reused for each one of the uh, containers. Um, uh, Linux containers, um, uh, so, so the way that Linux containers, uh, that Lex Lexi and Lexd work is that uh, uh, they use, uh, instead of using hardware features of your CPU to work, what they do is they use uh, security features of the Linux kernel. And these collect these security features collectively, um, they are, they are called Linux containers. So, and these features include uh, C groups, namespaces, and so on. So, as soon as all these features they were being added incrementally, then it was possible to do um, uh, to have containers, Linux containers, uh, over there. And uh, LXC. Uh, Compared to LexD, Lex Lex uh, is sort of like a hypervisor. A hyper hypervisor in the sense that it is able to control for you uh, the containers that you create, so it gives you a, a better, uh, better usability 
in the sense of how you can create uh, containers, how you manage them, how you manage the life cycle. And this is something very important. If you were to use plain le Lexi, then you will have to write a lot of commands by yourself, and it makes it a bit, it makes it less uh, usable. And <clears throat> oh, the last point: virtual machines. I sort of repeat it there, and the reason that why I put it is that uh, uh, there is a development now, a new development in uh, LexD uh, to add support for actually real uh, virtual machines. Uh, apart from having, let's say, these software-based uh, containers, it's possible, uh, there is a plan now in the following months that you will be able to run uh, actual virtual machines through, uh, through LexD from the same interface. So this should be happening, I suppose, in the following months. The first patches, they have been added to uh, LXD, LexD 3.18. Nineteen twenty ten. So this will be Lex D three nineteen. Excellent, excellent. Uh, if there are any questions, please ask. Uh, there are just a few slides, so if you ask them now, it will be excellent. Huh? Thanks. All right. Mm -hmm. so, um, <clears throat> uh, so how do we compare Lexi and LexD to other container technologies like Docker? So uh, when you have uh, Docker, you have uh, what we call application containers, while when you have Lexi, LexD, you have system containers. With application containers is that each container that you have, it, it, is a, it's, it virtualizes, let's say, a single application, so that's the, the core part of the container, to run this application, and when it's done, it finishes. However, uh, with system containers, what happens there is that uh, uh, you start a container as if you are starting a virtual machine. And that's why these are uh, system containers. Uh, currently, uh, Lexi is developed by Canonical, uh, and also uh, LexD started as a canonical project and it is still being uh, developed by canonical. And using Lexi or LexD, uh, you, it's possible to run any Linux runtime. Uh, I'm using the term runtime or rootfs, which means that each, each Linux distribution is made up of the, the Linux kernel and also the uh, programs, libraries, and so on. So this part of that, that does not include the Linux kernel is what we call the runtime or rootfs. So in LexD, you can run any, uh, it is possible to run any Linux distribution apart from Ubuntu, uh, as long as it has been adapted, uh, as, it, as long as they have created this, an image for that. Um, so at the moment, as it is now, LexD can run um, Ubuntu, they can run Debian, CentOS, Fedora, um, Alpine, many, many um, distributions. The last one is Kali Linux, if you know Kali. Uh, this was not supposed to appear. Okay, there was a slide here that will ask you which is the most, the, which is the biggest uh, installation base of uh, LexD, and the answer is already there, which is uh, it's uh, in the Chromebooks. Um, if you are uh, in Chromebooks, you can install. Uh, there is a feature to get the Linux terminal to get Linux applications running on the Chromebook. Uh, so the way they implement this is that they're using LexD to implement this. So by virtue of uh, Chromebooks, they sell by the million, uh, then this actually increased uh, the installation base of LexD quite, by quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, if you have one of the supported uh, uh, Chromebooks, you can uh, use uh, LexD. Um, 
the way they implement it just for a technical reference is that uh, they use a VM. Uh, so you need to have a Chromebook that supports hardware virtual virtualization. It creates a VM. In there, it installs a cut-down version of Debian. And in that version of Debian, they install uh, uh, LexD. And by having an understanding of LexD, you can actually use that to create your own containers and do fancy stuff. And people who have Chromebooks, they love this thing. So how do we install uh, LexD? Uh, you can use either Deb packages or Snap packages for Ubuntu. And uh, specifically for Ubuntu, they are uh, this, uh, kind of, these versions. There is LexD 2 for uh, 1604. Uh, actually, you can see the sequence of the LexD versions and which LTS version is, uh, uh, corresponds, which means that if you want to stick to a specific version of LexD, you get this uh, five-year um, um, support. So there will be packages for five years after. Um, so LexD4 will appear in... Uh, uh, when the new LTS comes, up, uh, comes about. And uh, uh, apart, so these uh, versions there you can see are available as uh, dev packages, but also there is a snap package. Uh, through the snap package, you can install all of these versions as well. And also, if you use the snap package with the, this is snap package terminology, if you use the stable channel, uh, you're getting the very latest version, which is current, currently at 3.18. Uh, so this is actually the one that we'll be using now. And uh, preferably, it's good to get the snap package, because if you stick to the Debian package, uh, the latest Debian package you get is uh, 3.0 in Ubuntu 18.04. There is this, uh, because it, it is easier to maintain snap packages, uh, there is uh, this effort to uh, switch to snap packages. And it, and it works just fine. So to use uh, LexD is quite, uh, uh, it, it quite simple. You install the package, and then you have to um, uh, configure it. You need to do, a initial, uh, you need to do a, an initialization, initialization at the beginning. And during that initialization, you specify something called the storage, storage backend, which means uh, the location where all these containers will be saved. So that's like the most important question. You do it once and then everything works. And the other part is you can figure out, you can configure the networking. Um, for both of them, there are some defaults. So uh, uh, after you have installed uh, LexD, uh, you run the command uh, LexD init. And then you are presented with all these questions. Uh, all these questions, they have save defaults. So if you just press enter all the way down, uh, you will have a, a usable system. I've highlighted uh, the two sections. The first section highlighted is the one about the storage, storage backend, where you create something called storage pool. Uh, keeping the default will give you a sane, uh, some sane defaults. The other part about networking uh, also has some uh, same uh, defaults, so you can go ahead and it, and it will just work. Uh, the default network configuration, what it does is that uh, uh, it creates a private bridge, and all containers that are generated, they fall on that private bridge. Uh, so this is uh, one example of, LX, of LexD in it. This is another example when you um, configure it, which has some more information about uh, doing the, uh, creating the storage pool. And uh, this is at the moment that I'm using the laser pointer. So you create a, a, storage, a new storage pool, you give it a name, you keep the default, and here we can actually see uh, what kind of uh, uh, backends we can use. So from here, we can see that uh, among the supported ones uh, is ZFS, uh, which is the default uh, when you use Ubuntu. Uh, there is also ButterFS. Uh, there is Ceph, LVM. And there is one called uh, Deer. 
Uh, this one uh, dir is when it is used, it's the one that does not, sub it's, it actually means that when you create the container, the container, just drop the files into a subdirectory. So dir is the most, dir is the most, let's say, primitive. It may not be as efficient as the rest, but it will work in all cases. Uh, in this slide, uh, only that one was available on this system. That's why it did not ask you for anything. It will, here, it will just go ahead and use the dir backend. So here you can see that you have ButterFS, Ceph, and so on. Uh, then it asks, do you want to create a new ZFS pool? We say yes. Would you like to use an existing block device? Uh, in this case, we answered no. And it asked the size of the new loop device. And we have configured it to 15 gigabytes. So when you use ButterFS, when you use uh, ZFS, uh, you can uh, either uh, point it to an empty partition, and, it's, and LexD will just go there and set it up as it wants. Or if you do not have a separate partition on your computer, you can keep the default as it is shown here. And what will happen is that uh, LexD will just create a very big file, let's say 15 gigabytes big file, and in there it's going to format it as ZFS, and we'll start using it. Uh, quite simple stuff. Um, <clears throat> so when you use... Uh, uh, LexD, it's good to have some repository of what we call container images, ready-made container images that you can use to download, instantiate, and run a container. So over here, there are some, there are, uh, there is, uh, one repository is called Ubuntu, which has the official Ubuntu images, and there is also another repository called Images, which has all over all the rest of the, it has Ubuntu, but also all the rest of the container images, uh, such as CentOS, Debian, and so on. And here are some examples of how to specify uh, the a container image uh, name. Uh, it's a repository, uh, colon, it's colon. Yeah, not semicolon. So a repository name, colon, and then you have the version. Um, all right, so to, to create a container uh, to, uh, with LexD, we use the, uh, the command line that we use to interface with, uh, uh, with LexD is called Lexi. One of the common questions that people have when they are using LexD is that, I mean, why is this Lexi? Lexi? It's like it's... Uh, they are confused with uh, the previous, uh, the, the other project, uh, which is Lexi. This is a, a, a decision that was taken early in the development of LexD. So that's, that's the name of the command. So all these commands that you use to interface with LexD, they all start with Lexi. And then after that, you add the, uh, you add the command. Go ahead. Uh, the previous, uh, the Lexi, the previous commands, what they had was that uh, there was no command that was just the letters Lex LXC. Uh, the, the previous, th um, the, other soft the other software, it had commands like uh, LXC dash create, LXC dash uh, destroy. So what happened was there that uh, the previous, the other package, the Lexi package, uh, will have uh, commands which, which had a, a compound name. Uh, 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 if you are pedantic, I think they are correct, but it's not very, uh, people can get it wrong. Uh, 
it, the issue is here is that if a person has experience with Lexi from before, then yeah, they will have uh, a bit of a learning curve. Uh, but those who are starting, let's say, with Lexi straight away, uh, they will be more or less okay. I completely understand. What should happen is that uh, there should be some explanation on the documents which say that, uh, which tackles this issue. Uh, I, I see a lot of people who are talking about it. Um, yeah. Um, actually, let's, let's um, try to do this live. Okay, so it's going to be Lexi. Um, so we talked about the repositories. So there is this the Lexi com, uh, Lexi image is the command to show you the content of a repository of container images. So here we can see uh, the full list of uh, uh, here we can see the, the available container images. It's a very big list, so which means that you will have to like scroll back to figure out uh, to see some more information. Um, what is important here is uh, um, yeah we have to go we have to use probably a pipe. Okay, and uh, this is, uh, uh, let's try to figure out, figure out uh, where it is, uh, here we go. Uh, here it shows uh, Bionic, which is 18.4, and uh, so this is a container image, it shows you the, ha, uh, who can, who knows about this? So this is the new uh, virtual machine container images. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I was a bit surprised about the size because it shouldn't be this. It, it, this is the proper size uh, for the container images. This is the virtual machine uh, images. So actually, we should be looking here. Uh, this is the uh, image, and this is the name. The name is B. And it actually has uh, what we call aliases. Uh, LXC image. Uh, this is uh, some information about the uh, bionic image. And you can use image info uh, for some information. And here we can see uh, the aliases, how we can reference this container image. Uh, usually I try to put, uh, I usually use the version name, uh, version number. So I'm sticking with that. You can try any of the rest. You can even put default and so on. But I'm using this one. So as we showed in the, we try this command. Uh, this is a somewhat old laptop, which takes a bit of time to work. Uh, as it is now, I have uh, 
the container image, uh, it is cached on my computer. Uh, you want to answer? Hey. Uh, ca canonical is uh, producing these images. Um, so these are managed by Canonical. What they do is they have a special project called uh, Distro Builder. So what they, so th what they do is that uh, uh, they have uh, some templates which are used to build the images. So if people want to build their own images or rebuild the existing images, they can use Distro Builder to do that. It's possible to, let's say, to uh, to run your own images with LXD. The, the repository, the, the, two repositories, the two repositories repositories what we have shown, Ubuntu and Images, these are canonical repositories. So this is compared to Docker where it's not very easy to figure out who has what, but here is just canonical stuff. So it's running. So here I'm using a Lexi list. Um, here is my container. It's running. It has this internal IP address. And uh, this has an internal IPv6 uh, address. Um, how do we get a shell inside the system container? We use Lexi exec, the name of the container dash dash and the command we want to run inside the container and uh, yeah let's do that so now we are in the container So, yeah, all this is inside the container. Um, so, um, down there, there is a variation, another variation of the command, uh, which means that when you run the, that variation, uh, you can get, uh, an, um, you can connect as the non root user, as Ubuntu, inside the container. Um, yeah, the the containers, the container images from the Ubuntu repository, they all come with the non-root account called Ubuntu. So now we are Ubuntu in my container. Um, so th these are containers, and uh, okay. Uh, what else we can do? We can uh, once we are in the container, we can use apt update, install some software, and then we can. Um, uh, so in this task here, we will be um, installing nginx. Let's do that. Why do I have to run this?
if you want to install a, a package that is uh, so is the, is the APT list uh, very much up to date or you may have like oh of course yeah yeah Uh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. There was a question at the back. Uh, yes. Um, how is the connection to the container by SSH? Or how is because if you enable the firewall will. React uh, react the connection or how is working this connection? Okay, so uh, what is the how, how do we connect to the container? Uh, it's a system container. We can connect with SSH. However, we can connect also with uh, uh, the Lexi command, and this is how we have connected here. We connect through the Lexi command, and this is through the hypervisor that manages all the containers. It's not uh, SSH. It is possible to use SSH, but we have to configure keys and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So we did this. And this should install Nginx. Okay, so Nginx is running. Um, we can, uh, how do we verify that? So it, it replies, it says something. Five minutes. Okay. Um, let's go into var. This is HTML file. Um, and we, uh, we make it a tiny edit. We changed, we made the reference to LexD. So how do we access the container uh, from the host? Uh. This is the IP address that, uh, uh, of the container. We take that IP address, we put it here. And welcome to Nginx on LXD. Uh, if we want to uh, kill the container, what we do is we exit the container. We do lexd lexi stop my container, lexi delete my container, and the container is gone. Very quick and easy. Uh, the, by default, the uh, lexd containers, uh, they are unprivileged, which is very good for uh, security. Uh, I think with Docker, it's, not, um, it's, it's, it's more complicated. That's very important. Um, with um, okay, there is an issue with nesting. We can create a lex. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 
uh, uh, I will say that uh, it's, it's an overall decision that has to do with uh, uh, they wanted to separate the Linux stuff from the Chrome book stuff. And by doing it with uh, a very lightweight uh, uh, hardware virtualization, uh, this was a very good design uh, decision. Um, it was just, it, it was a decision that it fitted their purpose, from what I understand. Uh -huh. um, so, time is a bit uh, tough. So, one very nice thing with, uh, with LexD uh, is that you can, uh, uh, you can run uh, GUI programs, uh, X11 software, and here is an example where I'm running, uh, I'm running a, a game from Steam. Uh, if you're familiar with these things, you can see that this is, uh, uh, I'm running CSGO, uh, Danger Zone. And um, are you aware of that? Excellent. And if you see, I just played once, uh, um, I, I, pl I played a few games just for testing and taking the screenshot. And here you can see that I was matched with someone with uh, this yellow, actually I'm, I'm first here. I matched with someone, and he's from. Uh, they are from a, an esports team called Navi. Uh, they are very, very famous, and they win a lot of uh, matches. So I was matched with them, and then this guy carried me, and I managed to win thanks to that. Um, with um, you can have container images with older versions of uh, Ubuntu, and there is a, a, a container image with Ubuntu 12, uh, 12.04. So, on one hand you have 1204, the other, on the other hand you have uh, GUI containers. So here is an example of a very old uh, software called Reddit, Reddit, which is based on, um, um, how do they call this, Tickle, uh, TCL. So this stuff, they, they do not have packages for newer versions of Ubuntu, and the latest the one that works is uh, 1204. So by using this stuff with uh, LexD, you're able to uh, get this thing running on Ubuntu 12.18.4 uh, as being the host, and the container is Ubuntu 12.04. It's very handy and quick stuff. Uh, okay. Um, you can have something called uh, Mac VLAN, where the, if you have two or three containers, they, will, they can show up on your LAN. So you can see them into your uh, local network as individual different computer, uh, computers, but they are containers. Uh, here is an example where we use the Kali container and we use this, uh, here, this is Kismet. We can do wireless scanning and this, and this thing is runs inside the uh, LexD container for Kali, uh, which means that it takes the, the network device of the USB adapter and it it takes it from the host and pushes it inside the container. The host cannot see it anymore. It is fully controlled by the container. And that's why it can do all these uh, things. And these things are running inside the container. Uh, here you could add your story, uh, how you use LexD. Um, tomorrow there is a workshop. Um, I want to hear, so I want to discuss what we can say. I have a list of things we can do. Um, one thing you can do is you can use LexD to cache the Ubuntu 18.04 uh, container image, so we don't have to install it all together from the internet. Um, and this is the links of the community. Uh, the main website is linuxcontainers.org. And the support, uh, this, uh, the support forum for LexD is discuss.linuxcontainers.org. Uh, it's very active, and this is the place to go to to get some support for, um, uh, for LexD. Uh, that's the end. Thanks for your attention. Very, very sure. quick question, please. Thank you very much. Uh, this is really interesting. Uh, I don't like the old style containers or, or the app style containers, but LXD, I think it's very interesting. I'm curious about a couple of things. Uh, one example is, if I understand correctly, each container runs the same kernel as the host system. It reuses the existing exactly. running kernel. So if the, if the host system has a kernel vulnerability, um, it will affect all the guest systems, right? 
Uh, technically, yes. So that means we need to upgrade the kernel on the host system in order to patch the vulnerability on the individual containers. If the, if the vulnerability affects, it's something specific that can be abused in containers, then yes. Right. Um, uh, this is, this is, you uh, know about live patch. So this is a container, this is a canonical software. Okay. Uh, live patch, well, live patching is that you can take the Linux kernel with a vulnerability and you can find some special patch software and you can apply it to the, to the running kernel so you do not have to reboot. To uh, this is live patching. This is important for the audience. Please uh, wait five minutes. So the, 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 question, the question is uh, that worries me is uh, after you stress tested a certain kernel uh, to a machine which is a host for virtual systems, either containers or, or virtual machines, uh, means that you have a very um, strong relationship of, of certification between that kernel and that machine. So it worries me. Usually we lock down uh, production virtualization machines and they run the same kernel forever because mm -hmm. nobody accesses the machines except, uh, you know, not many people and there are special circumstances. So it worries me that we have to upgrade the kernel which has been certified and stress tested on the host. I see that the alternative could be running containers inside a virtual machine, but then maybe we lose the performance benefit. I don't know. Can you just briefly comment on this? Um, well, we can take it later. We can discuss about this. Um, I think that for uh, uh, for specific workloads, for specific cases with uh, uh, something that the company would use, they are. Uh, I will say that for, for that one, you will have to discuss with uh, uh, with someone from Canonical uh, to see uh, how to do it. The, th the thing is that it depends on the case of whether some vulnerability is something that actually does affect your running system or it actually it might not affect it uh, uh, at all. So it depends, it's, it's, an case. it's a case on case situation, I, I would say. But if you want to go for more details, you can catch me now actually in a bit and we can discuss it. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention.